I think gold's going to remain strong. I'm bullish on gold as far as uh, bullish on oil as long as OPEC behaves and base metals, it depends on the Chinese uh, trade deal. Welcome Stock Pulse investors. We are here on location at the 2019 Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. I've got with me now a good friend of the program, Mickey Fulp, the mercenary geologist. Always appreciate him stopping by. Thanks, Rob. And I know you want to talk about uh, hedge funds, basically abandoning the commodity space. Here we are surrounded by a bunch of them. How do you see this space? Yeah, so hedge funds are speculators, and I dare say that most people walking around the floor here, they may consider themselves investors, but this is pure speculation, what we do in this business. So about a year ago, the hedge funds were massively long in commodity, hard commodity space. And hard commodities would be non-renewables like metals and oil and gas and sure versus the soft commodities, which are basically food, corn and orange juice and coffee and all that sort of stuff. But we stuff. have to have, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have to have all these metals, too. If you didn't have all those metals, you wouldn't have any, uh, lose infrastructure. any farms Absolutely. to make Absolutely. mega amounts of corn and soybeans at all. So uh, massively long. And so prices were, were high. Oil was 60 bucks. Copper was... 325. Uh, they started to get antsy in the early part of the summer and they went massively short things like copper and copper all of a sudden dropped off the shelf went from uh, I don't know 310, 315 and was down to 260. Well that's because all the hedge funds went short massively short on both sides of the ocean in Shanghai and in New York and a lot of that had to do with the trade difficulties between, first of all, uh, Mexico and Canada and NAFTA, but more importantly, the ongoing trade dispute with China. So what they do uh, in October, November, they fled oil space. And what did oil do? It cratered. Now, a lot of this with oil's supply demand fundamentals, we're making too much oil. This whole idea of peak oil is crazy. That, that, that was what everybody <laughs> talked about seven, eight years ago. Now, as of today, they are out of hard commodity space and metal prices are languishing, especially base metal prices. So what turns this around? When the hedge funds come back in. What's gonna make them come back in? When China and the US make a deal. Well, yeah, and when's that? I mean, you tell me, right? Well, no one knows. Yeah, How mean, can you say that? Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, uh, who knows where the talks really are, right? Who knows where, where the right. truth lies? So, yeah. So it would be my contention that China needs the U.S. a lot more than the U.S. needs China. Let's just look at the relative performances of the two stock markets last year. The Dow lost six percent all of that in the last quarter chain high exchange lost 25 percent last year so what you're seeing is you're seeing the chinese start to come around because they really need the u.s to buy their goods even still so we get uh and there's talk that we could be close with china who knows is that the ultimate driver, or what about uh, commodity prices in general? Gold seems well, to be a nice trend. Yeah, well, gold is a risk on risk off sure. thing. You know, gold was, it, gold's dependent on two things right now, and we saw that in the last quarter and even before that. If the stock market is booming, gold's not going to do very well because it's a risk, risk off environment. Gold's a safe haven. The other thing that drives the price of gold is the U.S. dollar. If the U.S. dollar is strong, gold's not going to perform well. When the U.S. dollar becomes weaker, which it has over the last couple of months, then, then gold's going to perform better. Uh, and a lot of the U.S. dollar has to do with interest rates. Well, as soon as Powell comes out and says, you know, they, all the Fed becomes dovish, 
interest rates go from three, let, let's talk 10 year bond, interest rates go from 3.2% to 2.8%, what's gold do? It goes higher. So, uh, so for gold, that's what's going to control it. For the base metals, those prices there are very strong supply demand fundamentals for all the base metals right now. But until this trade deal is settled, speculators, the hedgies, are going to be very reluctant to come into commodity space. Yeah, oil's uh, acting a lot better. Well, oil. why is that? Because OPEC made big production cuts. Uh, you know, U.S. produced, you know, we talked about on Friday, record million barrels of oil, 11.9 million barrels of oil last week. So putting on your speculator hat, how do you kind of see the, the year playing out? Well, I think it, uh, I think gold's going to remain strong. I'm bullish on gold as far as uh, bullish on oil as long as OPEC behaves and base metals, it depends on the Chinese uh, trade deal. Progress. Yeah. So overall, uh, overall health of the resource space, would you say? Decent? Uh, worse than it was this time last year because yeah. metal prices are down. Sure. We need good metal prices. This industry will succeed when we get better metal prices. Not only gold, mainly gold, but because that's what drives the Toronto Venture Exchange. But we really need strong base metal prices too. So uh, one last one here then. Um, I guess uh, interest rates, it looks like we are pausing. So that ought to be good news. That's good news yeah. for our business for yeah. sure. Before I let you go here, um, if you had one investment tip to pass on to these speculators who uh, think they're investors, what kind of advice would you give them? Buy low and sell high. <laughs> well, I've never heard that one before. Well, yeah. so every venture exchange company, not everyone, but the great majority will have a double from its 52-week high and it's 52 week low. So what you want to do is go in and pick them out when they're unknown, unloved, unwanted, and undervalued. Pick them near that 52 week low and sell them at the 52 week high and you got your double. And there's no shortage of companies that have been uh, beat down here. So lots of deals to be had. Yeah. How's everybody follow you, Mickey? Mercenarygeologist.com, free subscription newsletter. You get my stock picks if, you're, if and only if you're a subscriber at Mercenary Geo on Twitter. We're very active on Twitter too. There you have it. Mickey Folt, the Mercenary Geologist here in Vancouver at the VRIC. Hey Mickey, appreciate the time. Thanks a lot, Rob.